Hey guys, my name is Cherry, and today we're going to be talking about rocket fuels. Space rockets have been around since the beginning of the 20th century and have developed significantly along with global modernization and technological advancement. Quite surprisingly, scientists claim that a simple candle wax can actually fuel a modern rocket. It's an interesting fact, but the question is, does candle wax actually make a better rocket fuel than the conventional rocket fuel kerosene? Candle wax and kerosene both fall under the category of simple hydrocarbons called paraffin. Paraffin is a technical term for alkanes or saturated hydrocarbons having the general formula CnH2n plus 2. Those that contain fewer than 5 carbon atoms per molecule are gases at room temperature, like methane. Those with 5 to 15 carbon atoms are generally liquids like kerosene, and those with more than 16 carbon atoms are solids like candle wax. Solid and liquid paraffins usually come from the distillation and further processing of crude oil. The most common commercial candle wax is made from a type of paraffin wax called pentacosane. Pentacosane is a straight-chained alkane with the chemical formula C25H52. Kerosene, on the other hand, is actually a mixture of four or more paraffin oils. Its major component is dodecane with the chemical formula C12H26. In 1992, NASA developed the first paraffin wax fueled rocket called Peregrine. It uses solid fuels and liquid oxidizers that is said to be immune to chemical explosions. But we can't conclude just yet that it's better than kerosene. After all, there's an even bigger factor to consider in judging the quality of a fuel. Let's get back to basics. Fuel is any substance containing chemical potential energy that may be combusted to produce heat or other forms of energy. Combustion is an exothermic chemical reaction between a fuel and an oxidant, usually oxygen, which in most cases produces carbon dioxide and water, and converts the fuel's excess chemical potential energy to heat and light energy in the form of flame. In other words, combustion is simply burning. Reactions that release heat are called exothermic, while reactions that absorb heat are called endothermic. Rockets rely on their propellant's exhaust for thrust to be able to take off. Therefore, a good rocket fuel must be able to produce large amounts of energy to provide the force for the launch. This is where entropy comes to play. The change in entropy of a reaction, written as delta H, is the amount of heat absorbed per mole of a substance at constant pressure. It's often interchanged with the term heat of reaction, which by definition is a change in entropy of a chemical reaction. Sounds exactly the same? Not quite. Heat of combustion, on the other hand, is the energy released as heat when one mole of a substance undergoes complete combustion process. In other words, it is a change in entropy of a combustion reaction. Since the change in entropy is defined as the heat absorbed, and the heat of combustion is exothermic, then the change in entropy of a combustion reaction is always negative. That makes the change in entropy of endothermic reactions positive. There are multiple ways in finding the change in entropy of a combustion process. One way is by using bond energies. Bond energy is the energy required to break one mole of covalently bonded atoms. Breaking bonds absorb heat and is endothermic, while forming bonds releases heat and is exothermic. Calculating the change in entropy of a reaction using bond energies can be expressed with this equation. In this calculation, we can refer to a table of average bond energies. Let's look at the equation for the combustion of paraffin wax and try to calculate its change in entropy. The bonds broken refer to the reactants, which in this case is paraffin wax and oxygen. Our paraffin wax contains 24 carbon-carbon bonds and 52 carbon-hydrogen bonds. Each oxygen molecule contains one oxygen-oxygen double bond. We multiply the number of bonds by their coefficient and the corresponding bond energy and add them all up. We do the same with the bonds form or the products, which are carbon dioxide and steam. Then we substitute the numerical values into the equation and calculate. The change in entropy of the combustion of paraffin wax is negative 15,388 kJ. Here is the calculation of the heat of combustion of kerosene using bond energies. Another way to find the change in entropy of a chemical reaction is with the idea proposed by Germain Henry Hess, known as Hess's law. It states that the entropy change of a chemical reaction is independent of the intermediate steps between the initial and final states. In other words, it doesn't matter how you get from reactant A to product B, the change in entropy is still the same. To further explain this concept, let's look at the equation for the combustion of kerosene. To use Hess's law, we will need the heat of formation of all the substances involved in the reaction. Heat of formation is the change in entropy in the formation of one mole of a substance from the standard or naturally occurring form of the elements. Since oxygen naturally occurs as O2, its heat of formation is zero. That leaves us with three equations altogether. The next part is a tricky bit, when we manipulate the equations to cancel unwanted substances and be left with the equation for the combustion of kerosene. We want dodecan to be in the reactants, so let's invert its equation. 
that is, multiplied by negative 1, including the change in enthalpy. To cancel carbon, multiply the second equation by 12. To cancel hydrogen, multiply the third equation by 13. All that's left is to add up the remaining substances and their enthalpy changes. So there we have it. The change in enthalpy for the combustion of kerosene is negative 7,518 kilojoules. Here's the heat of combustion of paraffin wax using Hess's law and the heat of formation. If we compare the values we calculated from using bond energies and using heats of formation, and the values taken from the internet, there's not much difference. By converting the heat of combustion from kilojoules per mole to kilojoules per kilograms, we will be able to determine which fuel can give off greater heat per kilogram of the fuel, and therefore decide which one would be able to produce a greater thrust force for the launch of our rocket. To do this, we divide the heat of combustion by the molar mass of the substance. Whichever source we choose to look at, it is clear that paraffin wax releases more heat of combustion. But that's not the winning punch. We're now done with calculations. Now let's talk rockets. And by that I mean fuels and oxidizers, propellants and rocket structures. There are three major types of rockets according to propellant. Solid, liquid and hybrid rockets. Kerosene falls under liquid propellants. Liquid propellants have the fuel and oxidizer both in liquid states, stored in two separate tanks. The major drawback with liquid propellant rockets is that it requires more complex and expensive valves and regulators to control the flow of the fluids, making the construction of the rocket very costly. Also, liquid fuels, including kerosene, happen to work at their best with extremely dangerous oxidizers like nitric acid. It produces substantial amounts of harmful, even fatal, byproducts. Hybrid propellants, on the other hand, uses the advantages of both solid and liquid states. That is, solids being easier to store and handle, and liquids being easier to regulate. This category is where paraffin wax falls under. Aside from easy storage and management, combusting paraffin wax only produces water and carbon dioxide as byproducts, since it only uses liquid oxygen as oxidizer and requires no harmful additives like chlorine. The fuel itself, paraffin wax, is actually more expensive than kerosene, costing around $8.3 per kilogram compared to only $0.83 cents per liter or about a dollar per kilogram of kerosene. But since we're talking rockets, and liquid propellant rockets require a huge sum of money to manufacture, far greater than the cost of its fuel, then technically, using paraffin wax would be cheaper. It's now time to decide which one is a better rocket fuel. Considering all these factors, it would seem we have a winner.